Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to help you with numbers um, 9 and 11 on your unit 1 week 1 uh, homework assignment. So when we talk about number 9, I want to have that thing on the left here. And what you're given is an acceleration graph. looks something like, like this. This is just a quick sketch. Now let's make sure we understand what this graph is telling us that at t equals zero this particle you know starts accelerating here value of two meter per second per second and you'll notice that um, this is level meaning right here it's still two still two still two still two so our acceleration is constant in this region and when you work this problem i strongly recommend although it doesn't say this but i would put a velocity graph up above this here and let me just read here. It says particle starts from rest, so that first point is going to look something like this. T equals zero, velocity is zero. Now, out to 10 seconds, the velocity is increasing. So at 10 seconds, we're going to be maybe up here somewhere at a value here that I'm going to talk about how to calculate in a minute. And because acceleration is constant, our velocity graph should be linear. Now, as far as calculating this value, what is this value? Well, look at what acceleration is. Like, look at how it's calculated. Change in V over change in T, that's how average acceleration is calculated. So you have an acceleration and you have a change in T, you should be able to calculate the change in V and hence find this value. Now, for the next part of the problem, you'll notice the acceleration is zero. And I don't want to give this away, but you know you need to understand how that affects this curve if we have no acceleration in this region out to here. So continue to draw it, drawing that curve out to 15 seconds. Now, in this region here, you'll notice the acceleration is negative. And all that means is opposite direction. It does not directly mean slowing down. Okay, it means opposite of what you're calling positive. And in this case, it will end up, I think, being slowing down, but um, just because an acceleration is negative does not guarantee that the object's slowing down. It means opposite direction. You, you're given an acceleration and another uh, delta t. You can calculate a change in v. Now, here's some possibilities, and I'm not even going to look, look it over. Like, I'm not even going to project which one it is, but if your change in v was something like uh, was uh, equal to this, then this except negative. You know this graph is going to end up up here, like right here. If this change in v is negative but less than the value of this, this graph might end up up here somewhere. If this change in v for this region here is bigger in magnitude than this, then this graph will come down here somewhere, and you'll have to decide that. Now, one more thing I'd like to point out. You notice if we rearrange this the change in V is acceleration times the change in T. And again, look at the graph here. Acceleration is this dimension. The delta T is this dimension. And the product of the two is area. Right? So this area represents the change in uh, velocity. Same thing over here with one plus and one minus. So that's probably enough on that problem. Uh, I think I'm gonna move on to number 11. Take another look at that. All right. So when you get to number 11, there is a, a graph drawn. And I've done a super, super rough sketch here. Again, this is just intended to get you rolling here. Now, that's a velocity graph. So it's important that we understand, all right, what does a velocity graph tell you? Well, any sort of area under the curve would be telling you a displacement. And tangent line slope gives the acceleration. So when we look at these questions, and it says find the average acceleration from uh, 0 to 11.1 .1 seconds. So 11.1 .1 seconds is about here on the graph, roughly. It says starting at 0, that's here on the graph. So what they're basically asking for is the slope of that line. That will give the average acceleration over that time interval. Question B, estimate the time at which the acceleration have its, has its greatest positive value. All right, so remember that acceleration, average accelerations, delta V over delta T, or in the language of derivatives, instantaneous acceleration is given by dV dt. Either way, you're looking for slope. 
So you're looking for the location where you think the slope is the largest, n positive. And then you'll just read it off the graph. And you're gonna like to, you know, pick an example. Let's say I think that's here. It's not, but if I thought it was here, then you read the time off here. That's what they're looking for. Next part. Well, when is the acceleration zero? All right, so you're looking for a location where dBdt is zero, and that's not much more I can say about that other than just doing that for you. Estimate the maximum negative acceleration. So you're looking for the steepest or where the slope is the largest, but negative. And then you're gonna read the time right off the graph. So that's probably enough for this video. I'm just gonna call that a day right there. Again, this, that should get you going on those two problems. And uh, yeah, have a great time working on them. Talk to you soon, bye.